Hey there, this is Dan and you're watching this LTC. I'm here today with number two in my series of doing starter lists for every faction in Warcry. Uh, this time we're going on from destruction and moving into death, the Grand Alliance. So I'm going to show three lists for every um, death warband. We're going to go budget, competitive, and kind of sweet casual uh, fun times lists as well. Uh, let's start it off with Legions of Nagash, the uh, poster boys, Nagash's main group. Um, the budget option, now there are cheaper ways to do it, but the best sort of giving you an all-around really great introduction to the faction and the warband is just to straight up just get the Warcry starter box. Um, I can't suggest that enough. It's got skeletons, grave guard, a pretty good leader in the necromancer who has an excellent quad ability. Um, you also get to play a Seneschal. It's giving you a pretty competitive, one of the most competitive straight out of the box warbands um, just right away. And I think that's really great. So if you're starting the faction wanting to uh, jump in for cheap, I would say that that's the best way to do it. Then to get competitive, um, oh, and by the way, just the box only comes with two of the uh, Great Blades for those Grave Guards, so you will want to convert one. But if you can't, like you don't have any extra swords, say this is your first sort of purchase in miniatures games, um, that's okay. Running one of your Grave Guard with a shield is going to be fine for you. Um, not too big a deal. Uh, the split between um, swords and spears for your skeletons is going to be just based on the blades do more damage and the spears uh, are really good with that range too at holding people off, stopping them from hitting you back. So I do think that you want to um, you know split them up a little bit. Now if you're going to get competitive with legions, um, one way to do it is just to add a Vargeist to the starter box and that'll give you a really powerful list. You're basically putting a ton of numbers out there or you get to choose, or sorry, put it, putting a ton of numbers out there and having a move 10 flyer. Um, or you can decide to kind of change things up a little bit. So building around the Necromancer as a leader is really powerful. He's probably the best leader in the rounds where you roll a quad. Um, his quad lets you do um, a pretty huge AOE bubble around him that can just really change a game. Now, you only get quads off, even if you're using a wild dice, you only get them off 37% of the time. So in rounds where you don't get it, um, I find him a little bit underwhelming. Now, you know, you may decide that it's totally worth it, you know, roll those dice. But if you don't want to, um, there is an ally option that gives a lot of the benefit of that and for a lot more consistency. And that's the Abhorrent Ghoul King um, or the Abhorrent Archregent. So they have a movement buff in round one and then an AOE damage buff in round two. And so you can bring that in and then um, you'll want to put in, instead of the Necromancer, probably the White King. Uh, the one with the axe does a little more damage and that'll get the most sort of benefit out of the Ghoul King's abilities. And then you'll still just want to have a Vargeist, at least one Grave Guard, and then a bunch of skeletons. So I would say playing competitively, you're going to either want the sort of tons of numbers uh, Necromancer build or something with an Abhorrent Ghoul King, which will be a little bit more consistent. Now, as far as sweet lists, um, you can you have a ton of options with Legion, Legions of Nagash. I really like doing the sort of 28 days later idea of uh, really fast zombies. So you can put seven zombies in a list and then have the Vargoyle, who is the even bigger Vargeist, um, as well as an abhorrent arch regent. And then that'll uh, give them that movement buff that makes the zombies actually pretty quick. And then you can also add a, another grave guard. Um, if you really want to commit to the bit, you can sort of do conversions to maybe have just like a bigger zombie with a sword. And that can be your grave guard with big blade. And, um, you know, that can be like one of the mini bosses for your giant group of zombies. Uh, Vargoyles and Abhorrent Arch Regions also look a little zombie-like themselves, so you can get a really cool um, sort of flavorful warband with this, and it's going to be pretty powerful too. One note I do just want to make on Legions of Nagash is their roster might ch be changing in the near future uh, when Soulblight Gravelords come in. Uh, we don't really know what that's going to look like, um, 
I know that all of these models are going to have a place in Warcry. Uh, we just don't know if they'll split it into two different factions or not. So the ne next Death Army is Flesh Eater Courts. And uh, one thing I really like about Flesh Eater Courts, they're one of the only Death Armies where the, uh, the art for them isn't just all sort of uh, bluish teal and black. Um, they've got a lot more color. You can see here, you know, they've, they've even got one who's got lots of yellows and greens. Um, and then also this blue-red one, which I think is just a really cool choice on their part. Now, the cool thing about uh, list building with Flesh Eater Courts is that the budget build is the competitive build. Um, the Once again, the Warcry starter box for $60 is going to give you every option you could want to play Flesh Eater Courts in sort of a powerful manner. Um, so you can use the Crypt Infernal Court here, which is sort of the biggest uh, leader with wings, and then just a regular Crypt Flare, which is the elite wing guys, and then eight ghouls. And so that's a warband with, you know, 10 models. Ghouls are really solid because they've got move five, um, you know, respectable damage output, and they can kind of go across the board. You're sort of flooding the board and giving yourself mobility at the same time. And then, you know, having these two big winged guys, anything that ghoul flood can't solve, which is a lot of problems. Um, having these two really beefy flying options uh, just covers those bases. This is just a really nice, um, you know, solid tier one warband that you can just get out of one box. Um, you can do cheaper, so just getting a box of ghouls will get you technically a warband for cheaper than this, but I think that's a really bad option just because uh, you're not going to really get much replayability out of it. It's going to feel very one note, and I just don't think you're going to have a lot of fun doing that. And so, you know, I would never want to suggest that, and I would hope that no one's been suggested that, you know, by someone else, just because um, it's so easy to just give yourself an actual Warcry experience for just one box. Um, whereas if you get a box of ghouls, you'll probably end up spending more money just because you'll buy that, realize that you're not having a great entry point and then you'll have to buy something else or stop playing. And I would hate for someone to stop playing because of that. Um, another really nice option is the uh, the Vargolf core tier. And that can also be built out of that box. Last note on these is that Warcry, Start Collecting, and Broken Realms boxes all contain this sort of competitive build in them. Uh, the Broken Realms box being the new one that came out with the Abhorrent Arch Regent and then all of this stuff. And so there's really great choices for someone who's wanting to get into this faction. Um, you can either just get the Warcry box and just stop there, or you can get the Start Collecting, which actually goes out to cheaper if you're willing to put in the work to sell the sprues for the um, the big guy, the, uh, the Zombie Dragon. Um, or there's the Broken Realms box, which you'll probably just build this main list, but then you can actually go in um, and use the Abhorrent Ghoul King, or sorry, the Abhorrent Arch Regent that's in that box and use it as an ally for all your other Death Armies. Uh, that one's a really interesting piece because he's just an awesome leader who uh, isn't that useful in his own faction, um, except for in certain situations. So that situation to me is this uh, sweet casual list we've got. Uh, I call it the King's Guard uh, because you're really trying to leverage the Chosen of the King ability. So it's uh, just for the sort of ground-based elites, so the Haunter Courtier and the Crypt Horrors. Uh, here, I'll read it out. A fighter can use this ability only if they are within six inches of a visible friendly fighter with the root leader rune mark. Until the end of this fighter's activation, Add two to the attack's characteristic of attack actions made by this fighter that have a range characteristic of three or less. So I like putting it in with an abhorrent. Uh, one, because the ghoul king is a king. And uh, so these are chosen of this particular ghoul king. And then they get to, um, the haunter and the horror get to just have an incredible amount of damage output when they're nearby. And then the ghoul king is also using that triple um, which goes really well with the double of Chosen of the King. It's really easy to use them in the same round. So this is a really nice combo list that it's really just a hair's breadth below the competitive list in terms of power, but still gives you a ton of options and um, a ton of hitting power, probably even more so than the competitive build. 
Then we go into OCR Bone Reapers. Um, now, this one can be a tough one to build on a budget. So there isn't any kind of sort of value box for the Bone Reapers. The best bet that I would go for is um, if you can find on eBay, there are some people out there selling half of a Mortec box for about $35. I would say that's your best bet. Um, that way you can just sort of make this all Mortec list. It is going to have some issues. It is fairly slow. Um, it is a little one note, but it definitely gets you into the faction. If, if really what you want to do is just play OCR Bone Reapers, you can do it for cheap. Um, and then of course you can also, if you're wanting to get just into the army, you can buy the whole box for 60 and you're playing Warcry while you're starting your OCR Bone Reapers army. Now, if you're going to be competitive, um, I think you want to sort of increase your mobility and your damage as well, sort of having some more elite units um, while trying to keep your numbers up as much as you can. So I think the Liege Cavalos is probably your best bet for that. He's really fast. Yes, he has the mounted keyword, so that's not quite as good as some of the move 10 flyers. He can't climb things, but he's really fast. He has a respectable damage. He's very hard to kill. And then you've got your Stalker with Spirit Swords, which is, Stalkers are actually an excellent unit. They put out uh, great damage, specifically the ones with four swords do. And they also have that move five, so they can uh, get around the board, you know, at a, at a reasonable clip, which is nice. Um, then, again, you're going to want to uh, rely more on Mortex with two-handed swords than the ones with sword and shield. The two-handed swords cost a little bit more um, per per unit, but they do a lot more damage, so that's going to be nice. The only issue is uh, actually fitting them in with numbers can sometimes make it hard, which is why here I'm running two of the sword and shield variants, just because that's uh, what actually makes you fit under a thousand points. Um, so this is just a slightly better sort of range of abilities for the faction to be using. Now, as far as sort of sweet casual things to do with OC arc, uh, you can get pretty crazy with what you do with stalkers. Uh, like I said before, stalkers are really good, so why not just, just purely maximize them um, without doing anything else? So. Uh, the way I'd like to do it is with the uh, Soul Mason, who can give extra attacks to the Stalker with the just two big swords. Um, that one normally does a little bit less damage than the uh, four Spirit Sword ones. And even with Onslaught active, it does more damage against some toughnesses, uh, less damage against others. But the Soul Mason can just really superpower that one uh, two-sworded Stalker. So you can kind of pair them together. Um, the Stalker is a little bit faster than the Soul Mason, but uh, only by one, so the Soul Mason should still be able to keep up. And that can just be this sort of two-unit, just massive damage output piece that you've got there. And then um, the other two Stalkers are just, you know, there because this is a Stalker list that, you know, just uh, going all in on that sweet unit. Uh, it's one of the best things in the army in terms of sculpture, and they don't really use it much in Age of Sigmar armies that I that I see so much. So really cool to be able to take a ton of advantage of it uh, in Warcry. And then of course, you know, you're gonna fill out with two more techs because uh, that's what you have room for and uh, you do need some numbers in the list. Finally, we're getting to Night Haunt. Um, there's a really nice cheap way to build a pretty functional Night Haunt army, or sorry, warband using the Underworld's Warband, um, and then using that leader and just proxying her in as a Slasher Crone. I think point for point, the Slasher Crone is probably the best leader available to Night Haunt. And then um, you'll have stuff for a Dread Warden, four Chain Gas, and two Mirmorn Banshees, um, if you just proceed to get the uh, easy to build Chain Gas kit. Um, then, going into competitive, um, even though I did just say the Slasher Crone is the best point-for-point, uh, point, there are sort of more options when you just have more points available that can be really nice. So, the Dreadblade Harrow uh, fits here as far as being a move 10 flyer, which can solve a ton of problems for you whenever you have one in your warband. And then, we're also taking advantage of a Spirit Host. So, the first Spirit Host you use can uh, use its triple ability, which just gives a huge damage boost to it. Um, 
then you're going to want to be sort of adding in more numbers to the board with three chain rasps. And then uh, I like to have Miramore and Banshees um, as much as possible, just get two of them into each list. They're sort of the, the most all around sort of movement and damage option that's available to the Night Haunt at a reasonable price. Um, Night Haunt do sort of suffer a little bit sometimes for uh, paying for paying a lot of points for having high toughness and uh, flying not being paired to great movement um, can cost a lot of points as well in this game. But the Muirmore and Banshees are a really solid option for them. Um, now if you do love that Spirit Host and you want to get even more into it, uh, this is a slightly jankier way to do it, but um, you can definitely play two Spirit Hosts in a list. It starts to take up a lot of points, but you can just really push them into the opponent right away and just sort of force them to try to have to kill one. And then uh, have the Knight of Shrouds on Steed, which is a really hard to kill general that you can play. Uh, also has decent damage output and again, move 10 flying, which I just, if you're hearing these videos, you know that I value that a lot in Warcry. Uh, so you can push those spirit hosts straight into your opponent, try to force them to kill it, and then Nighthaunt have that awesome resurrecting ability that once they take out your spirit host, you can uh, put it put it back on the table next to the Knight of Shrouds. Um, your Knight of Shrouds is going to be really hard to kill because it's already durable, and with the move 10, you can move it out of range of your opponent's scariest unit. Uh, you can just have a ton of fun just really leveraging those spirits. If, uh, if you want to be a madman, a total crazy person, you can actually uh, ditch these chain rests in the Grim Gas Reaper um, to put in another spirit host if you want, uh, just to have four units in your warband. I wouldn't suggest it. I think uh, that would be kind of tough to make that work, but um, you know, it's absolutely something you can do if you, if you want to go really crazy with it. All right, so there you have it, three lists for each of the death factions. Um, if you appreciated those or if this was useful to you, uh, please hit a like and uh, subscribe for the next three that are going to be in this series. Um, I'm going to keep working on it maybe with a couple videos in between, but certainly this is going to be the majority of what I do for the rest of April and uh, the early, early part of May. So I am going to be doing it um, with Order, Chaos, and then I'm going to put the sort of Warcry specific warband, so the one from Order and then the six from Chaos, I'm going to be putting them into their own video uh, just because, you know, list building for them works a little bit differently than for every other faction. So I think they should have their own video where I kind of attack them in a different different manner than I would the other Grand Alliances. Um, so, you know, look out for those three videos. And until then, may all your roles be crits.